shopping. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. My name is Danny Smith, and I am the Manager of Events and Marketing at MicroExcel. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Incredible Ways to Tackle Open Source Automation, in which you will discover why it's a huge advantage of learning one tool and then implementing strategies to serve various development models like Agile, TDD, and BDD over other test automation tools. Our presenter today is Mr. Harpreet Singh, an innovative, results-driven QA practitioner with over 12 years of professional experience in the IT industry. He has presented across national QA conferences, including QAI Quest, and is responsible for QA and process automation for various clients in e-commerce and healthcare domains for MicroExcel. Just a few laundry items before we get started. This webinar is being recorded, and a link to the recording will be sent out in a few days. Also, we will have a Q&A portion at the end, so please type any questions you may have in the questions box, and we will get to those in the order they are received. If you have any questions after the webinar, please feel free to contact us at info at microexcel.com. Without further ado, I'd like to present our speaker for today's event, Mr. Harpreet Singh. Hello everybody, I'm Harpreet here. Good morning to all. So let's talk about uh, what we are going to present today. So the agenda will cover uh, mainly a Selenium tool and all the implementations around Selenium. We will see like how we can leverage the Selenium knowledge or Selenium implementation to uh, implement many other things. So first I will start with the general Selenium automation model and I will talk about two frameworks which are like widely used in a Selenium model, uh, hybrid and page object model. Next I will speak about how we can combine the Selenium and Cucumber implementation in a BDD environment. Then we will talk about a robot framework, which is a Google framework. And it has like many advantages in terms of providing an interface to the user that requires minimal coding. So we will see how we can use that with Selenium. Then we will, I will give a brief introduction about APM. So APM is a mobile automation tool, though it's like a little bit different than Selenium, but since like it uses the same kind of API and same kind of functions, so whoever has coming from a Selenium background, it will be easy for him to uh, learn the APM, Java API, and then start coding into that. I'll also talk about how we can integrate above all these things in our CI environment if we have to. So mainly I will be uh, covering uh, all the implementation with the programming language Java. So, but it's not like Java is the only supported language. We can do all these things in other languages also, but we will be speaking about Java in this webinar. So before I start, so uh, we want to have a poll question here. So we just want to know like how many of you have already been using the Selenium as an automation tool. So you can like uh, choose your uh, answers and you come to know later like okay how many of you are uh, already using Selenium. So this is this is a a uh, general Selenium automation model. So I'm not talking about a framework, particular framework here. But if you are using the Java as a programming language with the Selenium, so you will mainly need uh, two tools, Eclipse and the Selenium API. And then programming language as Java, you will be coding your uh, framework or your test cases. So this Eclipse will help you to create your test case in a development environment and helps you to uh, create a framework of any type. So there are two frameworks which I just spoke about being, ma uh, being mentioned in this webinar. So the two frameworks that are becoming a hybrid framework, which is of course a combination of data and keyword. And the second one which is like widely used in the Selenium is the page object model. So hybrid model is a combination of keyword and data. So keyword is nothing like uh, the functions which you will be using. 
uh, say if you want to do a click or if you want to enter some text. So there would be a function with that name, say click, enter text, which will act as a keyword. And if you have any business function, say enter login, so that can also be a keyword. And the data for uh, these keywords would be, if you are trying to click some object, then uh, the name of that object would be uh, your data. Or if you are entering into a login uh, screen, then the username and password would be your data. Or if you are entering some information, whatever information you are entering on, an, on a web page, that will act as a data. So the good thing about the hybrid framework is like once you have your framework ready, so you could like create a framework where you can uh, you can write your test cases in an Excel. And not only text test cases, even the definition of the objects, you can also store them in an Excel. So you could you could write a test driver script which will uh, fetch the object definitions from your Excel and will run your test cases commands also from an Excel. So I have marked the two key components, test case and object repository. And I have shown you an Excel where the test case will look like. So here, say, some uh, test step wants to enter in the first name field, uh, John, and in the last name field as uh, Abelzi. And then it wants to click add this vehicle button, uh, which is uh, having a click object as a function. So this click object, set text, switch to frame, all these are your keywords. And the value, column, uh, John, Ambrosi, all are your data. And this object names are uh, your uh, uh, names which have a definition of an object behind the scene, which is in your object repository Excel. So say the first name object and name in the object repository has an object value form dot member chair data android. And the last name object name has behind the scene uh, X path definition. So you just keep on inputting your object repository in the below Excel and you can keep on adding your test case on the top and that makes your test case. So as you can see that once the framework is ready, you do not need to be a very good in programming language. Uh, you, you can just keep on adding your test cases in this Excel. So maintenance work though may be required, but that is minimal. So that, that was only a test case and object repository, but as you know that the whole framework uh, has other components also. So this is a pictorial representation in a complete form of how the hybrid model will look like. So of course you will create a framework in Eclipse. Then you will use a Selenium web browser API to do your web browser automation. On the right side you see, uh, just now we have seen the test data and object repositories Excel. So you can like list out your test cases also in a test suite Excel. So Excel based inputs are all on the right side. And then you can have your function libraries in a Java file, uh, which could contain your business functions and your common functions. And all, all these things, test suite, test data, object repository Excel, and the function library Java class um, are then drive by a test driver. So the test driver picks all the inputs from test suite, test data, object repository, and then it performs all the functions, all the actions which if you ask you in your test case to do. If you want to screen, capture the screen, so the screen captures utility which you have to write. And once all the test suites have run, uh, the HTML report will be generated in the end. It can be emailed. So this is a whole uh, setup of the framework, how, how it will work in a real uh, work, work. Next is the page object model. So as the name suggests, the page object model is uh, normally implemented in those applications where uh, you can divide your application into different pages. So it is based upon a design pattern uh, which is uh, available in Java or any other programming language. So I will take an example of an e-commerce application where you can divide your application in different pages. You could have a login screen, your shopping page, your cart page, uh, your uh, payment page, and then your order page. So e-commerce is one of the 
application or a domain in which the page object model suits very well. So how does you program in that page object model is, uh, you have two main components here. So you will create the page classes first. So these page classes are nothing but the Java classes. So say if you have a login page, so you will be having a login page class. And that class will contain all the elements. When I say element, it means your text fields, your buttons, your link, everything. And then it will have a functions which you can perform on those uh, elements. So say if it is a login page, uh, you, have, you can perform a login function. So all the definition of the element and all the functions which can be done on a page are put in that class. And when you create a test case, you just call those functions from the page class and you keep on creating your test case. So this was an example where I was giving you about the login page. So on a login page, you may have three objects, username, password, and submit login button. And then you can have a two functions, successful login and unsuccessful login. This is the whole model when it will be implemented. It is very similar to the hybrid model. The only thing being differ, differing over here is the right side, of, right side of your screen, the page object. So I've taken an, again an example of e-commerce websites to draw this diagram. So you have a login page, shopping page, product page, payment page, and each page has an object definition for all the elements and then the functions which can be performed on them. So say the product page can have a function add to cart. A shopping page can have a function to search a product or navigate to product. So when you create a test case, on the left hand side you can see a test case. So you just refer that uh, login page class and dot the function name. Shopping page class dot the function name. So this way you can keep on adding your functions uh, in your test case. So once the page object classes are ready, it's very easy to create these test cases. And of course you can then uh, enhance your framework to capture your screen, uh, generate HTML reports, or email the test results. That was like the general Selenium model where you are using your Java and your other uh, um, structure to create a framework. But it has been like uh, observed that uh, the test cases which were created in the earlier model, they were more technical test cases. Uh, they, they were having a step which were very uh, at a minute level. So they does not represent the business functionality. So as you know, like in the BDD uh, development environment, so we want to have a test cases which uh, are more replica of how the business analysts uh, consider their requirements. So the Cucumber uh, along with Jerkin uh, gives you that, uh, that access to create your test case in a business uh, flow kind of uh, test cases. So the tests are written uh, in a given when and then, which is a Gherkin language. So business analyst would write a feature file, which have a normal English language test cases. And your Selenium web driver will uh, perform all the action based upon what business actions have been written by the BA. So here is an example. So here is an implementation on a high level. So you have a Cucumber. Uh, we are using Java to drive all the Cucumber commands. And Selenium will help you to navigate to a browser and perform all the actions. I've taken an example here. So you can, as you can see that uh, we have taken one feature called test logging. So this is how uh, the your business analyst will write your uh, feature or you can say a, a test case in a normal general term. So what his scenario is, he wants to do a successful login to website. So ideally what he will do, he will say that I will navigate to the URL, I will enter the valid credential, then I should see the welcome message. So this is like more near to your business requirement uh, flow. So now you can do the same thing, uh, the same feature file, uh, feature uh, file with the uh, more than one set of data. So the below feature file 
has the same thing, but it it has like three variation. You can do a successful, you can do an unsuccessful. So when you're doing a successful login, you will give a valid credential. When you're doing an unsuccessful login, you will give an invalid credentials. So this is one example where you can drive your feature file with a multiple set of data. And behind the scene, how it is done? So this is a, a snippet of your program. So the, your first step as a business user which has put is I navigate to website URL. So behind the scene, uh, we, what, what we have done is we have created a function uh, which basically is using a Selenium op, uh, API to open the browser and navigate. So when the business analysts say I enter valid credential, so we have created a function uh, using Selenium to enter a valid credential. And when, he, when he says that I should see the welcome message, then we have created a function behind the scene to validate message on the page, which is like your welcome message. Excuse me. So this is this is the code which is written behind open browser and navigate uh, function, which is a driver dot get uh, programming code. This driver dot get uh, code is written in a Selenium API, and it helps you to launch your browser. For intervalid credentials, uh, you are using driver dot find element, and then you are putting your text, which is your valid credentials, username and password into that page. So that's the coding which is done behind the scene. But for a BA, it, it just seems like a business flow. So that was the part where, uh, though the test cases are in a business flow. But still, you need to have a programming knowledge to drive them. So robot framework is one like uh, which requires a minimal coding as compared to whatever framework we have just now discussed. So this has been developed by Google. And it uses a keyword-driven testing approach. So it has like keywords to input your text, click your button, or do anything. And then robot framework. Uh, can be like integrated with Python or Java libraries. So these libraries basically help you to say to read an Excel, to read an XML. You do not need to code these APIs to read an XML and read Excel in, in your code. So there are like libraries available which you can attach with this tool and those functionalities are then available to you. So Selenium also has a library uh, to automate browser which can be attached to this framework. So the advantage is, uh, this is a ready-made framework. Uh, the reports are generated automatically. Uh, all the test steps are like very easy to create. It has an interface also, where you can just keep on inputting your uh, commands. It requires a minimal uh, programming language skill. So this is an architecture where the you have a robot and then you attach all your libraries uh, depending upon what kind of functionality you want. If you want to connect to database, you connect your database library to it and then you just drive your test cases. So this is an interface which is which can be launched from your command prompt. So you can see that this interface I am trying to create a login test case. So we did build this interface this is part of the robot framework. As soon as you put a command write.py in, in your command form, it will open that. And now it is ready to take your commands. So here is what I have put some commands. So say if I want to open a browser, the command is open browser. And then since open browser de will definitely take a URL. So you put a URL there. Now if you are trying to log in, uh, you have to enter some text in some field. So you use a keyword input text to give a path of your username field and what text it wants to have. And then again, for a password, you again use a input text function. You give what the password is. If you, you will be having a button to log in. So you use a click button function. So all this open browser, input text, input text, click button, close browser, these are not coded by uh, anybody. These are coded in the robot format itself. Only thing you need to know is uh, what is that keyword which needs to do that, that function. And even when you will work in that, 
if you just hover your mouse over there, if you put just I, it will give you the list of all the functions which start with I. So that help is also available in that in the tool itself. And in the end, when you run your test cases, you can see your report. It generates an automatic HTML report. So that is part of the framework. So very minimal coding. You do not need to write any code. You just need to know what actions you you can perform on a uh, on your web. You need need to know the name of them, and you just need to know how to define an object. So that was all Selenium. So we have used like Selenium API in robot. We have used the Selenium jar in our general Selenium model. So all that knowledge which comes from Selenium in terms of using functions and all that, you can use for APN. So APN is in mobile automation tool. It has a same kind of API and function names as are done in Selenium. It can automate your native hybrid and mobile apps. So even the programming language, you can choose whichever language you want. You can use Java, PHP, Python, and it supports both iOS and Androids. So if you have a prior knowledge of Selenium, it's very easy to, uh, after the initial setup, it is very easy for you to write your test cases because the test case functions looks very similar to your Selenium. This is how APM works. So you can use Eclipse to uh, write your web driver scripts. So when I say web driver, it is Selenium only or APM uh, web driver scripts. So if web driver scripts are written in your Eclipse, when you start an APN server, there is an APN server part involved with this other than the API. So the APN server sends your command which are to your web driver scripts, to your, uh, to your mobile phone which can be your uh, iOS phone or Android phone. And when it when it fires a command on those uh, devices, whatever response is generated from those devices is sent back uh, to your web driver scripts and you can like capture the results in your web driver scripts in terms of your flow. So this was a, like on a very high level how the APM works. So behind the scene like how APM does it, so APM has a access to the UI automation uh, tool and uh, in case of an uh, iOS, and it has a UI automator tool, which is part of Android uh, SDK. So what it does it through these applications, UI automation and UI automator, it sends the commands to these devices. So that's the tool uh, inside these devices or inside the, inside the SDK of these devices, uh, which it uses to fire the functions on the devices. And in terms of how to identify the elements and how to do scripting, so if you have done Selenium earlier, so you will be knowing that uh, in the web browser automation we use a firebug as a tool to identify the elements on a browser, if it is Mozilla. So in the mobile automation, there could be three options. So you could use an APM inspector. So APM inspector is a part of your APM only. So you'll come to know uh, the next slide, like how to use an APM inspector. Next is the UI automator. So as I just spoke, like the APM uses the UI automator to send commands to your Android. You can use the same uh, UI automator, which is part of Android SDK, to identify the elements also. And similarly in iOS, the UI automation which is part of the SDK, you can use that to identify your elements. Scripting, you can do in Eclipse if you are using Java and uh, the same kind of framework you can build which you have built in your web browser to drive your test cases. So how does, how does you use the APM inspector? So as soon as you start your APM server, uh, the interface itself has a link for an APM inspector. You start your application on an iOS or on a device, and then you just point your APM inspector to these devices. You can do a record and play to the APM also on these devices, and then later you can enhance these scripts which are generated from your record and play uh, to do your logic building and all those things. 
So this is an APM inspector which is part of your APM tool. So as you can see like as soon as I will hover my mouse over uh, application in an uh, emulator or in any device, I will see all the definition around that object in my APM inspector. So in this particular case, I am moving my mouse over enter your email ID and then I could see the whole uh, definitions of attributes associated with that field. So in the bottom you can see I have used a driver.find element uh, function which is very similar in Selenium also and I have used the user ID which is a variable and which has a definition of my user ID field and I am then sending some text to that text field which is someone at domain.com. So very similar. Uh, you can easily identify the elements using APM inspector or other two tools which I just spoke about. If you know Selenium, you can code it very easily. You can use the same functions. Now comes the CI thing. So we spoke about general Selenium model, whether it is hybrid or whether it is page object model, or we spoke about uh, robot. We spoke about Cucumber with Selenium, and in the end we spoke about APM. So all these all these uh, models can be integrated in your CI. So here I have like integrated my hybrid model into the CI. So you can see like there is an HTML report generated here. You can see the trend of your test weights, how they have behaved in the last few runs. This is for the Cucumber. So you can see like you do not need to go to the feature file to figure out what your test case was trying to do. This is a portal. Um, which, is, which will generate all your feature file steps here, what it has executed. So any any user in the internet, you can see on the CI tool Jenkins that what exactly your test case was doing functionally. This is a robot framework CI integration. So here, whatever you have put in your robot interface, you can integrate it with your CI tool and you don't need to like go and see the results in that HTML report which I have shown you while showing your robot framework. You can see that report here also in your CI tool. So after like discussing all these CI things, so I would like to know uh, how, how many of you are already using a CI tool because normally a lot of people use uh, automation but a very few of them have a, a CI integration of their framework with the development team, which is a big advantage in terms of uh, developing a good code. So please answer this so that we come to know and we, if, we, if you guys want, we can help you in implementing this. So what's the takeaway from all this? So Selenium is an open source tool, so it is not; it has no cost to implement. Uh, you can uh, integrate with another open source tools like Cucumber um, and your APM to do a lot of things. Selenium supports multi-browser, so you can create a single script and you can run it on your multi-browser, uh, whether it is Chrome or IE, you can run your scripts on them. Programming in Selenium is uh, can be done in other than Java also, you can use Python, C Sharp or JavaScript. Uh, all these languages are supported by Selenium, so Java as a programming language is not a restriction to it. CI integration, when done for the web automation, Selenium is a very immensely popular tool. A lot of people are using it. And last, the parallel execution is also possible in Selenium. So as the time progressed, people used to have thousands of test cases, and Selenium Grid provides a um, medium where you can execute your these thousands of test cases in parallel to cut off your time. So that was all and we will have a question answer session. Uh, I will hand over it to Danny now. So Danny. Thank you Harpreet. It looks like we have had a question come through during your presentation and that first question is can we do multi-browser testing using these implementations? Yes, definitely. Uh, I even mentioned that thing also. So we can like create a single script, and we can automate that single. Uh, we can run that single script on, on your multiple browsers like Chrome, your IE, your Mozilla. So yes, it is possible, and it has been a very cool uh, uh, 
cool advantage to do an automation in Selenium because of that. Thank you, Harpreet. Danny. Yep, uh, let's see. It looks like we've had another come through. Um, that question is, we have huge test suite containing 500 to 600 test cases, and it takes about six to seven hours for us to run them. How can we cut that time? So definitely you can cut that time. So uh, I spoke about Selenium Grid. It will help you to create uh, multiple nodes and you can like uh, direct your thousand test cases to the, to the grid on these uh, nodes which you have created and it will cut off your time. So along with that even uh, there are uh, cloud uh, applications available like Source Lab uh, which you can like take a subscription and you can like send your test cases on, on the Source Lab um, tunnel and they can like direct your test cases on multiple machines depending upon how many machines of subscription you have taken. So that Source Lab is a very widely uh, used to cloud-based solution which companies are using because you don't need to maintain your own infrastructure and Source Lab even helps you to record your results and send it back to you. So yes, so multiple, uh, sorry, the parallel execution is possible to cut off your time. Thank you, Harpreet. Um, just to give everyone some time to get their questions in, I wanted to circle back to the poll results and share those with the audience. Um, so in the first poll asking if um, attendees were already using Selenium, it was a 50-50 split. And then on the continuous integration, we had 75% said yes, they are currently using, with the 25% responding with no. Um, and then we have had another question come through, and that is, you talked about mostly things in Java, but our application is in .NET, and we are currently doing automation in UFT. How will we be able to utilize our UFT engineers if we implement this? So uh, Selenium supports a C-sharp library. So people coming from a UFT background uh, has a knowledge of C-sharp. Um, or an exposure to that language. So they can uh, use the C sharp library of Selenium to code the Selenium test cases. So that's not a problem. Then. Thank you, Harpreet. It looks like we have no more questions. So this will conclude today's webinar. Um, a recording of this will be sent to all participants. And just a reminder for those attending the QAI Quest conference, which will be held April 3rd through the 7th in Chicago, Harpreet will be presenting his session, API Web Service Automation Options with Open Source Tools, on Wednesday, April 5th at 10 a.m. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please email info at microexcel.com. Thank you and have a wonderful day.